After the Sabbath, as the new day was dawning, they went to see the tomb. What we know now is that when they went to see the tomb, they found that the tomb was empty. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. This early morning, we welcome you to worship God to remember that sunrise so long ago, and to know that as the sun rises over the city of Philadelphia or whatever city you are in, the tomb is still empty. Christ is still alive. Let us worship the risen Savior. Gracious and loving God, we give you thanks for this early morning rising for the graciousness with which you have 
given us to be here today. We come celebrating as those first disciples that you are risen. You rose from the grave and we declare you are risen indeed. We offer our hallelujahs this morning. Holy Spirit, be with us as we sing and rejoice and give thanks to you for the graciousness that has redounded to us through the years, first to our ancestors and now to us and into to the future that is to come. We give you thanks in the name of all that is holy in the presence of our ancestors and in the strong name of Jesus, I pray, amen. John chapter 20, verses 1 through 18. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciple set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came following him and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings, the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus's head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture, but he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside of the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying one at the head and the other at the feet they said to her woman why are you weeping she said to them they have taken away my Lord and I don't know where they have laid him when she said this she turned around and saw Jesus standing there but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, do not hold on to me because I have not yet ascended to the Father, but go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had, and she told them that he had said the things to her. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I want to invite you to sing along with the hymn In the Garden as it is sung by the Reverend Aisha Brooks Lytle and interpreted by the Wings of Praise Dance Ministry. The words of the hymn describe an encounter, perhaps like the one that Mary had in the Gospel of John, the 20th chapter. I come to the garden alone while the dew is still on the roses and the voice I hear falling on my ear, the son of God discloses and he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me I'm his own and the joys we share as we tarry there, none other has ever known. I come to the garden alone while the dew is still on the roses and the voice I hear falling on my ear the Son of God disc 
closes and he walks with me and he talks with me and tells me I am his own and the joy we share as we tarry there none other has ever known he speaks and the sound of his voice is so sweet the birds hush their singing and the melody that he gave to me within my heart is ringing and he walks with me and he talks with me and tells me I am his own and the joy we share as we tarry there none other has ever I'd stay in the garden with him Though the night around me be falling But he bids me go through the voice of woe His voice to me is calling and he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me I am his own and the joy we as we tarry there, none other has ever known. Greetings, St. Paul's family. Thank you for joining us on this wonderful Easter Sunday. On behalf of the St. Paul's Baptist Church and the trustee ministry, I'd like to thank you for continuing to give faithfully and consistently during these trying times. It is because of your faithful gifts that we are able to continue to bring the word of God to those both near and far. Today I ask that you give what you can so that we may not only continue to stream our services, but so that we may support, feed, and clothe those in need. Whether you intend to give to the tithes, offerings, capital campaign, or benevolence, we provide multiple options for you to do so. You can give via text by texting St. Paul's Gives to 77977. You can give via PayPal or PushPay on our church website at 1000wallace.com. On your smartphone, you can give using the St. Paul's app by searching SPBC in your app store. Download the app and then select the Give icon at the bottom of the screen. If you have Cash App, you can give by using our cash tag, St. Paul's Baptist Church. Or, if you would like to mail your gift, our mailing address is 1000 Wallace Street, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, 19123. Again, family and friends, we are so grateful for your continued support during these trying times, and we hope you all continue to be blessed. We delight in everyone the Savior said. You're welcome to become all that God made you to be. You are welcome.
Because God delights in you. St. Paul's delights in you. Come on, we bless the name of Jesus today. Hallelujah to Jesus. Come on, wherever you are, Glory in your God. living room, in your bedroom, mm-hmm. let's make that place a sanctuary. sanctuary. Let's make that place a sacred place for His presence, sacred. for the dwelling of His magnificent presence. Come, Lord, Spirit. we lift your name high. God, we create space for your Come, glory today. Holy Come on, let's sing together, Lord. Lord, I lift your name on high. Hallelujah. Lord, I love to sing your praises. Yeah. I'm so glad you're in my life. My life. And I'm so glad you came to save us. Let's sing that together, everybody. Lord, I lift your name on high. Come on and do it. The Lord, I love. Lord, I love to sing your praises. Come on, say, I'm so glad. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came to save us. You came from heaven. You came from heaven to earth to show the way from the earth. Cross, my day. From the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky, Lord, I lift your name on high. Oh, Come on and do it today. Hallelujah to your name. We bless your name, Jesus. Lord, my life. Come on, one more time. Oh, Lord, I lift. Lord, I lift your name on high. 
Glory to Jesus. Lord, I love. Lord, I love to sing your praises. Hallelujah. I'm so glad. I'm so glad you're in my life. Oh, I'm so glad you came to save us. I'm so glad you came to save us. Come on, you came from heaven. You came from heaven. You came from heaven. To show from the cross to the grave. My death. Chapter 28, verses 1 through 10, New International Version. After the Sabbath, at dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. There was a violent earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothes were as white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. The angel said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. He has risen, just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples. He has risen from the dead, and he is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Now I have told you. So the women hurried away from the tomb, afraid, yet filled with joy, and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. They came to him, 
clasped his feet and worshiped him. Then Jesus said to them, do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Gospel of Matthew says that early in the morning, the women went to see the tomb. I want to preach to you in this early morning service from the subject, right time, wrong place. Early in the morning, they went to see the tomb. I remember a couple of weeks ago when the President of the United States decided that we all should be open for Easter. I wondered whether he thought we were stupid. I certainly had no confidence that he cared anything about Easter. I knew he was just trying to distract us from the way that he had been handling events surrounding the coronavirus epidemic. I knew that he was trying to get church people to feel so nostalgic about the holiday that they'd be willing to risk life and limb, not only theirs, but their communities in order to be in church on Easter Sunday. And I said to myself, and I think I even said it on Facebook, he must think we're stupid. I hope, God, I hope we're not as stupid as he thinks we are. But to be honest with you, as the days and weeks have passed and we've approached Sunday morning, Easter Sunday morning, um, I've become a bit melancholy about the reality that we won't be able to spend this Easter in that familiar place. Truth is, I love the St. Paul's Baptist Church. I remember the first time I ever went into the sanctuary, just a little less than 11 years ago. I sat in the pulpit of St. Paul's and I thought to myself, this is exactly what I'd hoped for. From the pulpit of St. Paul's Baptist Church, I can see every seat. I can see the expression on the faces of God's people. I can hear their voices talking back to me as I preach. The place matters. A few months ago, I wrote about the genius of the St. Paul's Baptist Church and the reality that we have been a neighborhood congregation in the West Poplar neighborhood ever since we were founded 130 years ago. Place matters. And I miss the place. I miss the wooden pews. I miss the electric cross that's lit above my head as I preach. And God knows I miss the faces of the people who watch from the pews. Place matters. Yes, I know that the church is the people of God and not the building. But at the same time, I also know that there's something about the place where we gathered, something about being able to be in the space where so many were baptized, where so many prayed, where so many experienced God. Place matters. So I noticed this time as I read the text, from the Gospel of Matthew that the Bible says the women went to see the tomb. Now they had to have known that Jesus wasn't there. Just like we always know that our loved ones, that something essential about our loved ones is no longer there when they have died. I'm not saying they knew Jesus was risen. Their shock and surprise when they ran into him shows that they didn't expect to find him alive, but they did expect to find him there in that place, in the place where they left him, in that tomb. They went to see the tomb because that was the last place they saw Jesus. It wasn't about the tomb, but the tomb was where he had been. When they got there, they found the tomb empty and they were dismayed. 
And now I know you know the rest of the story, which is why you're up early on Sunday morning. Why you're up early on Sunday morning. To hear this story again about the one who had died being resurrected. But before we move to that part of the story, before we move to the celebration, let's take a moment and talk about the pain. The pain that comes when we don't have the kind of closure that the women sought early that morning. They went to the tomb because everything that was supposed to be done for Jesus had not been done. They went to the tomb to provide for him the last service they could perform. They went to the tomb because that was the place where his body had been laying. They went to the tomb because people need to do the work of grieving. I pause to say this today because I recognize that one of the things that we are struggling with as a community is that this virus keeps us from attending to the work of grieving. And so while we know that the deceased is no longer present in that body, it does matter whether we can gather to say goodbye. They went to say goodbye. They went early on Sunday morning. Turns out they were there at the right time. But since they wanted to see about Jesus, they were in the wrong place. I'm not thrilled with the disruption that this moment is causing for me. Even though I am comfortable in my house, I have the necessities, I have a refrigerator that's full. I have enough food to eat and some variety. Even though there's no rancor or conflict, certainly no violence in my home, the company is pretty good. And Bella and I, by and large, get along. Even though my home is comfortable, it feels odd to be there on this Sunday morning. And yet I hear the Spirit say that while this feels uncomfortable, God is still at work. The women went to the tomb only to discover that Jesus was calling them to another place. Tell the disciples to go to Galilee and there they will see me. Go back to the place where they originally met Jesus. Go back to the place where they were originally called. Go back to the place where he fed the multitudes and taught the Beatitudes. Go back to the place where they got to know the Savior. But don't get too comfortable there either. Go from the tomb to Galilee but know that you're going from Galilee into all the world. I think that's the word for us, St. Paul's. We had to leave Tent and Wallace, the building, so that we could see our Galilee. And I believe that we're going to meet Jesus in the places where we find ourselves. I said that last Sunday. I still believe it's true, but I don't believe that God has called us to this moment for us to stay at home forever either. I believe that God has called us to this moment so that God can show us in the next season of our ministry how to go into all the world with the gospel, not of a place, not even as wonderful a place as 10th and Wallace is, but with the gospel of the risen Savior, with the gospel of Jesus Christ, who defeats everything that is against us and is for us. God is for us. God is with us.
right time. May God help us to find the right place. Amen. I want to invite you now to prayerfully consider whether this is the moment for you to make your declaration. Is this the time for you to acknowledge your faith in Jesus Christ and your commitment to be one of Jesus' followers? Is this the time for you to make a commitment to a local congregation? Is this the time for you to sign your name on the roll of the St. Paul's Baptist Church? I don't know what God has led you to do, but I do know that if God is leading you, that the very best thing you can do is to follow the leading of the Spirit. We would be delighted to welcome you to the St. Paul's Baptist Church to make our relationship formal. I would love to be your pastor. If you want to become a member of St. Paul's, if you feel that that is the next stop for you on your journey, send me an email pastor at 1000wallace.org. You can text me 215-989-9616. Or you can leave a message on our social media platforms. Know that wherever you're a member, or whether you're a member anywhere at all, know that we're delighted that God has allowed our paths to cross for this time we've shared together. Pray with me, please. We thank you, God, that for whatever reason we've come to this place at this time that we now know you've led us here. Thank you for the power of your spirit that fills every space, that meets us wherever we are. Thank you, God, for the women who went to the tomb, who went to see the place where Jesus had been laid. Thank you, God, that when they got there, they found not a dead body. But as they went, they discovered a risen Christ. Help us, God, to meet you as alive, to meet you as risen. Take us, O oh God, in our hearts back to the places where we first received you. Remind us, God, of how you walked with us and talked with us and told us that we were your own. Remind us of the joys we shared in those moments. But God, help us not to get so attached to what is past that we miss where you are going now, how you are moving now. Yes, even in the middle of this trying season. God, I'm praying. I'm praying for people who are watching, who are just looking for some sign of hope. I'm praying for somebody whose temperature is up and they don't know what's wrong. For someone who has a cough and they don't know what's wrong. For someone who's separated from a loved one who's in the hospital. From somebody who has a loved one who's incarcerated. God, I'm praying for somebody who's dealing with an entirely different ailment. I'm praying for someone who is not finding their home to be a place of safety. I'm praying for somebody who is desperately lonely. I'm praying, God. I'm praying that you'll meet each person, whatever our circumstance, that you meet us all by the power of your spirit and that you would do what no one else can do, which is that you would meet us exactly in the way we need you. Show up, God, with a word of comfort. Show up with a word of direction. 
show up with a word of hope. Show up for us. God, we miss Tenth and Wallace. We miss our regular congregations. We miss Easter Sunday. We miss the version of it that we've gotten used to. We miss the children in their fancy garb, patent leather shoes. Miss the older saints in their big hats. Miss the pastor in her robe. Miss that familiar place. But God, the good that's in the church, the building, is the people of God and the Spirit of God. And help us to know now that the people of God and the Spirit of God are connecting. Show us the ways that you're going to use us as the church to go into the world. Thank you for what you've already done. Thank you for how you've already met us. Thank you for what we have not yet seen and heard and felt. Thank you that Christ is risen. And because he lives, we know that we can face tomorrow. We thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Greetings, Reverend Leslie Callahan and the St. Paul Baptist Church family. My name is Millie Russell, and I am elated and honored to be with you this day as we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We're truly privileged to be able to fellowship and break bread from house to house during this time of communion. I pray that the song that you listen to next will minister to your hearts and bless you immensely. Thank you, Dr. Ramsey, for creating such a beautiful and inspiring rendition of Break Bread. God bless you all. Welcome to St. Paul Baptist Church. It is the second Sunday of the month, and at St. Paul's, we celebrate the Lord's Supper on the second Sunday of the month. Those of you who are members of St. Paul's received a letter from me reminding you to bring with you whatever elements you have available in your house for communion. But for those of you who are visiting with us online, we're going to give you about a minute to get your communion elements. Bella and I, we have a cracker and white grape juice that we're going to be using. And we have two shot glasses, two small glasses. Um, we're not going to use the, a common cup because we're trying to model the kind of behavior that we need to engage in in these days of social distancing. Even in our own household, we probably shouldn't share a glass. Those of you who already have your elements, I invite you to meditate as we hear the wonderful melody and song interpreting Let Us Break Bread Together on Our Knees. On my knees with my face to the rising sun. Thank you, O oh God, for the opportunity that we have to share the bread and the cup. We thank you for the invitation that comes from our Savior, Jesus Christ, to eat and to drink and to remember. 
We remember the cross of Calvary. We remember the suffering and the death. And on this Easter Sunday, we remember also the resurrection and the victory. We pray, O oh God, that as we eat and drink, that we might be filled with the presence of Christ, each in our own place, and that we might feel also connected to one another, not just in one congregation, but around the world. We are the body of Christ. We're all members of the body in particular, and we thank you for being able to share with one another in this sacred meal. Forgive us for every sin we have committed and help us to live the new life inspired and strengthened, stop right here. Inspired and strengthened by the power of Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. Let us pray together now the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. Beloved, that which I received from the Lord, I offer also unto you, that Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and passed it to them and said, take and eat, this is my body, which is for you. All right, can you serve me too, please? Likewise, after supper, Jesus took the cup and passed it among them and said, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you for the remission of sins. As often as you drink this, Jesus says, Remember me. For as often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we do show forth the Lord's death until he comes again. Let us eat and drink. Let us praise God together on our knees. Let us praise God. It's our custom at the end of our communion ritual to sing the song, Remember Me. And so I'm going to ask you if you'd sing with us. Remember me. Remember me. Oh, Lord, remember me. Thank you for sharing with us in this service and in the Lord's Supper. Now receive the benediction. And now may the God of peace who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do God's will, that doing in us that which is pleasing in God's sight. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forever. And the church said, Amen. 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 God bless you. Go in peace. peace.